हेलो एम आई ऑडोबल यस सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून ओके सो आई एम डॉक्टर मोहम्मद रियाज आरिफ असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ अलीगढ़ मुस्लिम यूनिवर्सिटी आई एम हेयर टू इंट्रोड्यूस द इमिनेंट स्पीकर ऑफ दिस सेशन दैट इज टूडेज लास्ट सेशन ऑफ दिस एफ डी पी ऑन मशीनरी कंडीशन मोनिटरिंग सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई आई वेलकम बैक ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स टू द टूडेज लास्ट सेशन ऑफ दिस एफ डी पी ओके सो आई एम गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस द इमिनेंट स्पीकर इंजीनियर शिवनाथ राम तो इंजीनियर शिवनाथ राम इज द हेड एसेस्ट रिलियाबिलिटी एंड एसेस्ट मैनेजमेंट ऑफ जिंदल स्टील एंड पावर लिमिटेड इस एरिया ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इज इन इंडस्ट्रियल इंटरनेट ऑफ थिंग्स एंड डिजिटलाइजेशन इन कंडीशन मोनिटरिंग इंटरप्राइज एसेट मैनेजमेंट ही हैज़ कम्प्लीटेड बैचलर ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग फ्राम रीजनल इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज दुर्गापुर विच इज़ नो एन आई टी दुर्गापुर He has completed executive master's diploma in business administration (EMBA). Apart from this, he has also done various certification courses such as SAP PM module, advanced vibrational analysis, Six Sigma internal auditing, and so on. Engineer Shivnath Ram has 22 years experience in equipment reliability and maintenance. of steel powered cement industries and he has presented 29 technical papers at national and international conferences on topics related to equipment reliability diagnostics and trouble shooting maintenance vibration analysis ir thermography tribology machine alignment maintenance standardization and so on With this brief introduction, I would like to invite Engineer Sivnath Ram Sir to deliver his talk. It is good opportunity for us to have a person from industry to enlighten us from his talk, and I hope this will help academia to collaborate with industry. Sir, I request you to please continue your talk. Thank you, Dr. Riya Sir. Thank you. i appreciate uh, your efforts and uh, especially the efforts of madam sidra ma'am who has taken the initiative along with her team members and i really thank the uh, aligarh muslim university for taking this initiative and uh, thank you ma'am and um, i would like to present uh, my paper uh, on this uh, emerging trends and challenges in condition monitoring i will be talking a realistic uh, data Uh, taking the realistic data the current situations and the, the real challenges associated with condition monitoring in our industries so i take this opportunity to express my views now i'll share my um, ppt with you give me 2 minutes okay uh, just a moment so much sir thank you for accepting our invitation and uh, i would like to again uh, remind the participants that sir is a very dynamic personality so please uh, 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 use this opportunity to interact towards the end of the session and make the most of this session thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you sir i have one announcement to the participants yeah. so participants are requested to post their queries or questions in the chat box and we will take that questions at the end of the session okay so all the participants are requested to post their queries or any questions which he want to discuss in the chat box well is my uh, ppt visible sir yes sir yes sir it is visible yes sir thank you so start with 
this is a faculty development program on machinery condition monitoring and it, it has been organized by the department of mechanical engineering aligarh muslim, muslim university this university has been a fancy university for me itself uh, myself also because at some point of my time it, uh, i tried to get admission to this university today i feel this uh, uh, sense of pride in uh, being part of the initiative taken by this uh, university so going by the, the today's topic on the emerging trends and challenges in condition monitoring of industrial machines machines my whole presentation will focus on the inspection reliability and repair before failures kind of uh, thought process and let me introduce myself he has been, uh, dr riyas has already introduced but then to on my side a brief introduction myself shivnath ram i am heading asset reliability and asset management uh, at of uh, jindal steel and power limited the entire plant machinery is based at angul odisha so our industry basically is a uh, um, leading private sector in producing steel we produce steel of uh, various grades and uh, we have uh, you know all kinds of um, products mix of uh, steel now coming back to our uh, uh, the topic now what are industrial machines and uh, how do we define them to a layman these industrial machines are nothing but these are the you know assets and means to achieve business goals every industry house has a business objective and that business objective is to make more and more money and simultaneously tries to you know uplift the social status of the surroundings tries to help the nation by paying taxes to them so it is a kind of you know the the goal of the business objective is to make profits but that profit must be on uh, on the acceptable parameters on uh, say for environment impact the safety parameters and the the social you know uh, upliftment kind of thing but when we talk about the industrial machines they are just the assets and means to achieve our business goals now a industry can have many assets the first asset is the human resource itself okay second is the machinery the machinery can include the equipment the production facilities and the material handling systems kind of things the assets also include the material that is uh, there either they are raw or finished assets also include the infrastructure related to the land water resources mining areas and it includes vehicles buildings offices so all kinds of things that is associated within the premises of this company forms that asset of that in organization and one of the important aspect of the uh, asset is the intellectual property rights or patents that the company has made over a period of time based on its learning and you know experimentation on certain projects so in general what is an uh, asset when we talk about an asset is it, 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 uh, something that we can convert into some kind of cash it must have some economic value so industrial machines are of uh, the greatest uh, assets after human beings so for industry if their two assets are uh, very important one is the human resource and second is the industrial machines so with human resource we come uh, we talk about the knowledge and the skills with machines we talk about the reliability and the availability kind of thing now how this is impacted let us uh, understand the you know dynamics behind it so i'll talk about the equipment reliability at some point of time i'll be taking asset reliability but then the words are interchangeable to each other whenever i say asset reliability it means industrial machines only whenever i talk about asset reliability it means industrial machines only so don't uh, i don't want my you know audience to get confused with equipment reliability sometimes or sometimes asset reliability kind of thing but that we will be talking today only about the industrial machines so assets will be only industrial machines now for a profitable business what we want we want to produce more sellable products and with uh, with safety all kinds of safety and we want to decrease our operation and maintenance cost as well so there are two aspects what is high equipment reliability so second is low maintenance cost or operation cost now how this high equipment reliability can be achieved that's the point question and how the low maintenance cost can achieve there is the second question now how this condition monitoring can help us in achieving both the things is 
condition monitoring has some role to play with these two things. We have, must have to correlate whole thing. Everybody who talks about the reliability, reliability, reliability. Reliability has many aspects. We can have a reliable friend, we can have a reliable vehicle, we can have a reliable relationship, we can have a reliable asset. So what does reliable all together means about something which can be trusted upon? So whatever be the the your uh, uh, goal may be, your desires may be, if you are able to achieve those goals, desires with the help of something, say for your friend, say for your list, uh, machines, say for your vehicle, they are all those reliable. Now, how these reliable words come into picture for people in the industries? Reliability, we will concentrate on the functional reliability. Functional reliability. Functional. A pain function is to write. If a pain can write smoothly, the functional reliability is intact. Whether its cap is broken, torn, or cracked, or anything. If you are able to write with that pain, the functional reliability of the system is there. If you have a, uh, a cycle, you want to ride it on it, cycle on it, uh, ride on it and do cycling kind of thing. If it can achieve, uh, meet your requirements of taking you from one place to another, then its functional requirement is fulfilled. Even if its pedals are broken, its tires on may not be working fine, but your achieve, uh, goals are achieved. So we will be talking about the functional reliability. Functional reliability is something that the, whatever the function uh, is intended to that system, you get that function. Okay. So whatever, the, everything or every aspect, every human being, a machine has some specific function to perform. And that specific function needs to, has to be performed. If that function is performed without any trouble, then reliability exists. So how this condition monitoring is going to help us? Condition monitoring is going to help us in giving our equipment a high reliability. Now, if the reliability will be there, there, there will be less repairs and uh, less failures on the systems. If there will be less repair uh, failures on the system, there will be less repairs or replacement. Because repair requires manpower and spares, and replacement requires a spare. So all have a you know cost associated to it. So minimum failures means minimum repairs. Minimum failure means minimum replacement. So when the failures are minimum then the maintenance cost or the operation cost associated with that will be minimum. And if the failures are minimum, it means the availability of that system is high and we can utilize that system whenever you want to. And it means clear indication that the reliability is high. So when you have your machines ready, always ready, you know, to be operated at the time you need and for the time, uh, for the period you want to run it, then you, what we are doing, we are trying to the, get the best out of it. This is called known as the sweating the asset. You, you use the asset, you machine, to the level that it starts sweating. So that is known as the sweating the assets. When that happens, we what we what we are at, where we are going to, we are going to exceed the capacity utilization of that system. We are going to exceed the capacity of utilization of the system at the lowest operation and maintenance cost. So for a prof profitable business, high equipment reliability is important and low maintenance cost is important. I, I don't uh, emphasize much on operation because operation has many variables. It, uh, it, it is a function solely based on the input raw material also. So when the cost of the input raw material will become high, the operation cost cannot be decreased. So it is a variable factor out of domain of the industries. So it is market driven. So I am not focusing much on much on the operational cost, but definitely I will focus on the maintenance cost because once you purchase a machine, it has a cost. Now, how to maintain it at what kind of cost you are maintaining in good shape that depends entirely on the maintenance team of that. And the aim of the maintenance team will be to minimize the failures. If the failures are low, as I have said, we will have lesser, lesser, Replay, repairs and replacement. Now, equipment basically So, the impact of uh, I was coming here. 
So asset, a plant machine can have two aspects. Either it could be a revenue generator or it could be a revenue eater. Now it is like, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, you know, maintaining a pet of like elephant, thinking that it will generate revenue for us with the various shoes and all these things. But if the show does not happen, then we will end up making it the animal eat to lots of lots of food and putting you ourselves into trouble. So the, what we have thought of generating revenues, in fact, the pet is, uh, is eating our revenues upon. Okay, it is not generating at all. Similarly, in the plant industry, we have machines and, uh, which are meant to produce something, manufacture something. But they are, if they are kept idle on account of, you know, uh, um, some kind of failures or account of some kind of inefficiencies or, uh, or on account of some, uh, you know, breakdowns or, or account of some synchronization issues. So they are, they are all eating our revenues because a machine running continuously will produce more. So when we talk about the asset, I, basically in terms of, you know, the plant machineries, there could be many aspects related to that machines. Maybe the machine is underutilized for one function, one pump uh, activity. We uh, need the services of only one pump just to maintain the, you know, um, reliability. We are maintaining two more standby pumps. So what does it mean? We, for one function, we are maintaining three equipments. So the, 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 the you know, the full capacity of these three pumps are not getting utilized. We are utilizing the capacity to one third only because three pumps are there. We are making only one run. So this is under capacity under utilization kind of thing. Unscheduled maintenance breakdowns and downtimes will cost, you know, they will not, they will force the system to stop. If the system stop, there will be no production at all. And if the, if the production is, there is no production, it means we are losing on our part. So the, our neodys are getting eaten away. And there are certain systems in the industry. These are, they are non mode performing. They are non performing monitoring and road control system. People say that we have online vibration sensors. We have online temperature monitoring system. We have online process monitoring system. We have online flow monitoring system. We have all uh, online, you know, oil monitoring systems, level monitoring system. But if these gadgets are not performing at all, so they have eaten our revenue because we have procured with some kind of money installed. And we are trying to maintain spares with the, those systems, even they are not performing well. So what they are doing, they are, they, are, they are the costly items. They are eating away upon the profits that we have made. So non-profit monitoring and control systems are another, you know, revenue eaters associated with some industries kind of things. And this come the internal material transfer, not as per economical route. CFR, we have produced, and uh, our business is to produce the steel, plate steel. We produce uh, steel plates. So if you produce a steel plate, you, you can understand it is five meters wide and some, uh, some 20 meters long. We want to store somewhere. Suppose we don't have space, we want, we'll uh, take it and place to somewhere else. So this is a freeze product kind of thing. The, the cranes are involved, the trolleys are the trolleys and systems are involved, various equipment, plant machines are involved in lifting, putting to some, and then lifting, putting to some. So if the routes are not, you know, predefined, they are not economic in the sense that this is are the critical path that needs to be followed, then we are losing on our revenues. Because the, the, the uh, cranes that have been used uh, for lifting and positioning all this, they have utilized the time. The trolleys, the trailers, the vehicles that, that have been used, say for uh, railway wagons or the trucks that have been used, they have it in a minute because they have a fair cost associated with it. Sometimes there are materials which are static in nature. Suppose we have a, we are, we have a motor as a standby motor, uh, spare motor. And we have kept it in as an inventory for five years, six years, seven years, eight years, nine years, ten years. Those are static material, not in use. They are in stored conditions. They are not not of any use. It is like uh, hiring a most talented professor in a university and just as a reserve a reserve seat. Reserve seat in the sense that he is made to sit whenever required. Will you will take the services? This is not like that. This is not like that. It, it is uh, because. 
some cost is associated to, with the recruitment part as well. Similarly, some cost is associated with the machines that we have procured just to maintain it as in a stored condition, we are, we are taking this as an inventory. So inventory plays an important role as to what should be the minimum stock level to maintain, uh, to ensure that the equipments running are running in its best level, running its best level without any uh, much, you know, cost associated with the inventory. Poor storage conditions and self life losses are uh, another aspect associated with the plant machineries. When we have uh, kept our stored materials in the low lying areas somewhere, the water in the rainy season, the water creeping into the motor windings and uh, making it useless. Or we are keeping some bearings, grease lubricated bearings, uh, uh, you know, in the hot sun, open yard, where these uh, hot sun, you know, in the summer, bleeds the grease away out of them. So this is this is something a loss to the company. This is a loss to the company. And under the pill phrase, leakages, contamination, and waste associated with the lubrication oils, generally the lubricating oils, the hydraulic oils, you will be surprised that uh, wondering as why I am talking about all these things. But uh, uh, towards the going into this presentation, you will feel that all these things are important to ensure and to, uh, uh, to uh, ensure and to maintain the, the ideology and the concept of effective condition monitoring. These points are very important. People may be wondering why condition monitoring has nothing to do with these all these aspects. But being in the industry for the last 22 years and um, seeing the so many failures on my personal front and in the collective as well, we have come to experience some bad failures in this, um, you know, uh, the whole exercise of uh, you know, failures and getting learning out of it, turning out of it. So we, we have, you know, moved to a position where we, all these considerations need to be taken and we'll be speaking on those things. So what is the, the, the idea is that the, the idea the, through this slide is that only operational units means operating machines, the running machines will be able to generate revenues for us. And revenues is directly proportional to production. So production is directly proportional to equipment reliability. And equipment reliability can be achieved with the help of effective condition monitoring. So you, you try to understand this. Effective condition monitoring will help us to get equipment reliability. If the equipment reliability is high, the tendency of getting production uh, rate will be high. If the production is high, the tendency to get revenue will be high. So these are all interlinked and you must understand the importance of it. If, if, if the things are, uh, we can understand it at the root level, then it will be easier on our part to best, uh, you know, the, the cost benefit ratios analysis associated with any technology that we are going to use. We are, there are lots of, you know, conditional monitoring methods, uh, the gadgets, the, the instruments um, and uh, lots of vendors as approaching you also you take this instrument, this, this will do this, this will do that, and all these things. There, there is, uh, uh, at present, you know, there are people are talking about industrial internet of things, cloud monitoring, and wireless computing kind of things. Lots of things are going to come, but you are going to adopt only those things that are beneficial to you. This technology will exist, but that, that technology has to prove it false. That, yes, some proof of concept must exist. That yes, they, it is going to be beneficial for it. It's going to be beneficial. It is not just a data logger that it is going to just pick up the data, create a big data, and to, people are not capable of doing some kind of analytics or taking out some kind of reference to it. So, my point is, let us make the equipment reliability with effective condition monitoring. And we must understand how effective. If we can understand the limitations, the challenges the you know the trends associated with the condition we will be in better position to implement the concept of condition monitoring now some of the uh, uh, how this equipment loss you know uh, reliability is associated with the you know the on the business performance kind of thing the defect and foliar total cost to company is much much higher if we neglect the you know, certain abnormality associated with machines certain abnormalities associated with the scene. See, for example, 
a gear box is leaking the gear oil is leaking from a gear box a gear box is a gear oil is leaking from a gear box so if we are able to see it and arrest it it will require only one man to do the job and maybe probably it will take 10 to half an hour 10 minutes to half an hour 30 minutes or maybe at the most it can take one hour okay if you arrest it but if you don't arrest it here at this point of time I, there is a possibility of only man hour loss or component loss since oil is getting drenched away uh, leaking and you have to employ a manpower so oil will be at a loss because it is getting drained so the component is getting lost or manual so doing the makeup of the oil level leveling of that oil in the gearbox or employing a man to erase the oil leakage these are the two things that you can do at that point of time the two options if you cannot arrest the oil arrest the oil then you have to top up the oil continuously there are two types of losses one is man hour loss because man is engaged into that second is component loss, the loss of gear oil because it's continuously leaking so either you arrest it or you top up you have two options but if you miss on either of the two either of the two you, you are not uh, you, are, uh, you are employing a manpower to arrest or you are not uh, doing some kind of makeup of the oil what will happen what will happen oil will completely get out of the gearbox uh, oil will completely get lost now what will be done when the, this has taken place they said first condition will be the gearbox will start heating up bearing will start heating up because there is no lubrication as such the gearbox box, box will start uh, you know making some kind of noise okay so what what what, uh, what needs to be done there's this kind of you know things getting you know the the losses are going to impaired now if there is a loss associated with the man hour or if it's a loss associated with the component loss these are small losses they are all bearing loss is small losses you can do uh, attend it but if it requires uh, the mobility of tools and tackles to attend those jobs then the 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 defect and failure total cost to company will increase because to top up the oil maybe the height of the gearbox is very high and you cannot climb it and put the oil uh, uh, manually so you need some kinds of mobility tools and tackles some kind of crane facility or some kind of ladder facility with two more people holding those ladders so when the mobility tools and tackles are involved to into it the cost the size of the you know the the uh, failure cost will increase now top off has not taken place gearbox oil has trenched out so there could be a loss to you know material loss in the terms that gearbox may get fail gearbox may fail okay or it may have a uh, you know high vibration issues or it may heat up forcing you to you know lessen the speed slow the speed slow down or um, uh, forcing you to do stop and do inspection kind of thing so continuous interruptions may and you know interrupt the process as well but there will be a quality there is a chance of quality loss as well because if it is a it is this system is related to some kind of process that the quality may get you know uh, uh, affected material loss because the feeding has not taken place because of your stopping and inspection kind of things so if that happens then yeah the defect and failure total cost completes if the equipment itself fails the size of the you know defect cost will increase now if this equipment associated directly with some kind of production then the production loss will increase uh, be a very higher loss to the company now if the equipment has broken and its foundation structures are also broken so you have need to have do some civil work some you know uh, structural work that will take another 10 week 10, 10 say one week to 10 days 
may, that is the loss production loss. So all will come under this. There will be production loss, equipment loss, everything will come under because the system is not running for the for at least one week because it has the routing has to be done, structures have to be remodified, all kind of modification work related to base has to be done. And if it loss to the refractory, the structure and all these things, that means it, there is a loss to the integrity of those system. Now, all this can be recoverable, recoverable. Loss to production, loss to equipment and everything associated with the use. This can be recoverable by paying money. But if something there is a loss to the safety, somebody loses his life or there is an accident because of the system, system breaking and uh, you know posing threat to the system um, uh, working personnel nearby and if it is a uh, uh, system equipment that is containing a hazardous gas kind of thing like chlorine or carbon monoxide it is uh, and if that system breaks so there is a possibility of leakage of chlorine carbon monoxide gases or other poisonous gases associated with that system so there will be a total damage to the environment and uh, damage to the safety as well. So thus, if there is safety, environment degradation, pollution, and or if there is loss to human safety or uh, loss to human lives, that means the cost of these defect, this has been increased, it has been enormous. You just imagine it is started with leakage of oil from gearbox and slowly, 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 slowly getting cascaded into it. So. What will be the role of condition monitoring? The role of the condition monitoring is to detect the problem in its budding stage only. So if somebody is there, or some team is there who is working at this level, not allowing it to move to this level, this level, third level, because for detection of any problem requires this also, mobility tools and tackles. Tools can be small, tools can be large. Tackles can be small, tackles can be large. Somewhere tackle tools and tackles are not required, somewhere it has to be there. So if we can contain the problem at this level, the defect and failure total cost to the company will be less, less. But if we allow the system, the problem to cascade into major failures, then it is going to be a huge loss to the company. And if that one of anyone, at least if one of one cases, such cases come spring into your career, that is going to be a great loss and it will make you feel bad to the sense that the effectiveness of your condition monitoring activities has failed in, uh, in containing those problems. So at any point of time, you feel like what we should do, what we should do to do contain to detect the problem, it's budding stage in this. So all the, uh, the tools at present that people are talking about uh, data analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning and equipment condition inspection monitoring, they are all focusing on this aspect, only the detection of problem at budding stage. So that, but it, it's, it's restoration is minimum, it can be done at minimum effort. Its restoration can be being done with the man. When a problem starts in its budding state, there are minimum data to be analyzed. And that is very, very, that is very malam, easy to analyze those data, correlate those data. But when you increase into this direction, going into, up to the safety and environment loss, people have to uncover all this layer, all this layer, going from integrity loss to foundation rod, refractory structure, production losses, equipment losses quality and material loss, mobility, tools, tackles, and coming into that and coming into the pinpointing uh, problem that the root cause was oil leakage from gearbox. People will hardly come to know the, the root cause associated with it. Why? Because the machine has failed. There is nothing physical as re, lying there so that you can see and tell that there was oil leakage. Because now the system has broken. The foundation has broken it from itself. There is nothing as uh, in place as evidence to show you that this was the root cause. And next time I'll take care of this. But had it been with the condition monitoring activities, condition monitoring activities starts with the basic concept of look, listen, and feel. 
look listen and feel today we have instruments so we feel like instrument are the only media of doing the condition marking this not like that human body have you know five sense organs okay i don't say you use your tongue but definitely definitely i promote eyes ears nose and your hand palm skin these four or five sensors are of utmost importance they are the first sense organs sensory sensors for human beings to do condition monitoring to do condition monitoring they are, are very good engineers good you know uh, you know under uh, be a good person a good um, you know uh, analytics data analytics person who can you know do go, go by the data and tell you this is the problem but they need some kind of data but there are people who don't need data they can only sense it they will place their hand they will say the vibration is high the temperature is high it is having some kind of jerk associated with it some weird body can smell like you know this is not the issue okay? something is burning something smell is coming so what i want to say is that it's not always that you must have a smart sensors to start the condition monitoring the basis lies with the human organs look listen and feel look listen and feel the the the, the inspection sheet associated with look listen and feel gives you a fair understanding about the behavior of the machine about the behavior. you must be knowing there must be knowing there are many doctors who are md's and all these things very learned people doctors are there but they are not able to you know the help people in you know getting rid of some kind of diseases they are not able to they can they, they cannot help with the, uh, the people but there are certain you know people sitting nearby here and there okay they they understand the behavior of human body and they will give one uh, some kind of you know take this your fever will come down take this this will resolve and the business is flourishing like anything people have faith on them because they are getting some kind of result out of it so how this is happening they are not you know the doctor is a trained candidate a, a learned person you know who has learned all these things who has experienced all these he has done experimentation all kind of this. he has a better understanding but then his business is not may not be running well but a person who is we, we call as a jola chap doctor also sometimes don't take it otherwise but their business is running may run because they understand the basics associated with the human body maybe they they concentrate on the digestion part what is the best digestion part that can be utilized so they they cannot do resolve solve the problem as a very big big problem they cannot diagnose because they don't have tools and and the knowledge to utilize those things but then with the limited knowledge also they are solving people's problems related to health what i want to say is it is not that only sensors smart sensors or industrial internet of things the gadgets that we today we think of employing are the only source that we are going to get a result of it that will help us in doing effective condition no effective condition monitoring will start with the you know the 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 ability to speak to machines to understand the behavior of machines what they want to speak to you you have to consider that they are just 6 months baby 6 months baby and they have some problems so they either they will cry making some kind of abnormal sound associated with machine some they will cry or they will make some erratic movement of hands and legs telling that yes my vibration has increased or maybe their temperature will increase you by touching their forehead you will say the the baby is having fever kind of thing or maybe the the by just physical inspection visual inspection the baby is lying uh, is very silent in its place without making any movement you will feel that here something is wrong with the baby so you, do, you need not have to study you have no not have to do some kind of you know learning in that process this is your sense organs that is telling that something is wrong associated with my baby that that is very important that is very important he must be you know empathetic towards the operational you know um behavior of the machine 
operational behavior changes. And that is where we have to click data, maintain those data, correlate those data in resolving our problem. If that happens, we are in the right track of doing condition monitoring, helping people get, you know, equipment reliability so that they can produce more and more sellable products and, and fall in safety guidelines. And without degrading the environment, or any safety losses to humans, making profits, profits, profits. So this is the, the emerging trends and the challenges associated with the condition monitoring we'll be talking in the further slides, but this is the basics associated with this things. Now, when we talk about what is machine in condition monitoring, but I'll just brief because people are from condition monitoring I don't have to repeat the sentences. I don't have to repeat the definition associated with it, but definitely I'll try to pinpoint some points as to what condition monitoring is all about. What condition monitoring is. So machine condition monitoring is a, a complex process. You can consider it as a simple process as well. If your cycle starts and finishes in few or three steps, two or three steps. But it becomes complex when you have to correlate many things many things okay now just imagine of a human body i have a problem i am suffering from fever what could be the probable reasons fever can be associated with the food poisoning as well means you have taken a wrong food yesterday or day after death or today it can be it could be okay so you can associate it with your food poisoning associated with fever something real or something some external agent has caused it. A mosquito has bitten you and you are having a malaria, you are having fe a feeling feverish kind of thing. So the external agent is there. Internal agent is your food poisoning. You have taken food and internally something has happened. Okay, so you are having a fever. External is that something, something has bitten you, by, by, uh, bite you. A mosquito has by, uh, bitten you. So you are having, uh, developing that. Third aspect is interactive. Interactive. Suppose I was riding a bicycle uh, or in, fall from the bicycle or my bike on my forehead. I didn't have a you know helmet or something. So I got a you know injury on this forehead. So during the process of recovering it, the, this area was uh, relatively heated. This area was relatively hot. So when uh, somebody put a hand on my forehead, it found that the temperature seems to be a little bit high, telling that it is in the fever zone. The temperature is say for 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 102 degrees Fahrenheit. People will say that, yes, it has a fever. Because, because people tendency has to put hand on the forehead and you had a, you know, a injury on the forehead itself. So it was recovering. And the process of recovering, the nearby area was relatively hot and people thought it was a fever. Now, how this, this whole thing, there are three aspects there, internal, external, and third is interactive. Third is interactive. So when the industrial machines are considered, so for a, a particular reason, for a particular problem, there are many various reasons. It can be internal, it can be external, and third, it can be interactive. And we must be in a position to understand the three things. These three things. These three things. We must associate the things where these machines are lying, where the, whether these machines are being operated in some heat radiated zones that we must understand. The environment must be where this whether this motor is being operated in the moist area or some oil water leakage is there on the top of the you know uh, terminal box of the motor that water is getting in this into it causing some kind of flash or some kind of you know some you know interactive uh, things has taken place suppose motor was you know uh, during its uh, down uh, unloading at site it was made to fall accidentally and it has some internal, you know, damages associated with it. So internal, external, interaction. 
तो मशीन जो मशीन कंडीशन मॉनिटरिंग इज अ प्रोसेस इज अ कॉम्प्लेक्स प्रोसेस व्हेन इट कम्स व्हेन इट बिकम्स डिफिकल्ट टू फाइंड द सिंपल रीजन एसोसिएटेड विद इट देन इट बिकम्स कॉम्प्लेक्स बिकॉज यू हैव टू लुक एट द इंटरेक्ट इंटरनल एस्पेक्ट यू हैव टू लुक एट द एक्सटर्नल एस्पेक्ट एंड थर्डली यू हैव टू लुक एट द इंटरेक्ट एस्पेक्ट सो मशीन when we tell take that what is condition monitoring then condition monitoring is one step of called health assessment health assessment is also a condition monitoring what we do we try to find out the potential failure risk associated with that machine what is there in chance of any kind of failures in near future associated with this machine or today itself what is the health status of that machine whether the vibration levels are normal where its operating temperatures are normal where the pressure and the flow associated with the system is normal where the motor is drawing uh, you know balanced current into it it's normal where the environment is normal or not where the surfaces are clean everything is then where looseness is not there some kind of things you are assessing all these things you are trying to do the internal inspection based on some parameters or you are trying to look at the environment of the machine or you are trying to see that whether some kind of interaction is taking place whether this there is kind of some interaction in some rotating portion is getting rubbed in with some the external uh, you know uh, external thing lying there accidentally it is rubbing kind of thing so we have to look at this thing so condition monitoring is the process of health assessment come potential risk assessment and it is also a trending of monitoring and trending of parameters which indicate operational healthiness say for vibration temperature current flow pressure flow all these things it condition monitoring also includes the data analysis data analysis we have various data of vibration temperature and all this but those data needs to be analyzed to detect deviations and the budding anomalies and based on that it is not complete we have to take another step that is what is the risk mitigating actions to prevent the failures the budding failures we have identified some problem associated with that is then we have to prepare or identify risk mitigating actions risk mitigating actions we have to review our inspection and pm sheets ramp uh, this uh, preventive maintenance sheets to ensure that things are repaired before they fail machines are repaired before they fail and we are taking this as an opportunity of extending the useful life of machines people say may i might say the life of this bearing is only one year or two years or three years or number of cycles say for 10000 revolutions 20000 revolutions people have the habit of telling like this or we you might be telling the the suppliers might tell you but our concept is set the assets they get the best of top three if the system is running fine we'll allow it to run fine that is the beauty of condition monitoring if the health assessment tell that the every parameters are okay we'll allow the system to run even it is has completed its you know service life of two years so it is here we are getting an opportunity of extending its useful life of machine so if the life of a particular bearing is six months so we are replacing two bearings every year suppose the bearing has not failed uh, has not uh, shown some kind of abnormality after six months we'll make it continue to learn, uh, run for another six months by observing it by checking it by monitoring it and all these things if that bearing runs to 1.5 years say what does it mean we are getting three times the life of one bearing so our maintenance cost associated with that bearing will be become one third one third for the period because of the bearing is costing around 6000 rupees and the life is 6 months only if we are allowed to run it for 1.5 years means 18 months then the cost of the bearing to us every 6 months will be only 2000 rupees only 2000 rupees had it been the case of only 6000 rupees 6 months only we would have replaced the bearing three times in 1.5 years and the cost would have been 6318 so compared to 1000 rupees to 18000 rupees 
so how the maintenance cost is getting you know you know uh, affected you have the you have the chance of spending 18000 rupees because the oem has told the supplier has told or some your calculations are told that it will run only 6 months but you have made it run to 18 months through effective condition monitoring so the projected cost was 18 months 18000 rupees considering three bearing replacement now you have run one system up to 1.5 years only 6000 rupees one third of the cost has reduced one third of, but on going by the six month uh, criteria sigma 6000 here 2000 here okay so what i want to do here we get the opportunity to extend the useful life of machines as well and based on all these things the findings we try to develop some kind of sops what should be the standard operating procedures and associated smps the standard maintenance procedures for mistake proofing kind of thing take this step do this do this do this then this will not happen say for pump has some cavitation problems then you must ensure that suction side there should be no the the water level should be to the eye of the pump impeller it should have been it should be there always it should be always there to ensure to reduce cavitation you have to clear the suction side lines so there should not be any kind of flow restriction to the suction line there should be always positive suction head and there should not be any flow restrictions to it so what will we do we will try to clean the strainer associated with the suction side we will try to check the valve conditions on the suction side what we are doing we are trying to make some kind of sops for operating the pump and we are trying to make some kind of smp to how you can you know maintain the strainers condition and the valve conditions so when these sops and smps are made then there is and you know um, uh, period of mistake to when sops and smps exist and if if it is communicated displayed at site and if it communicated to the concerned people there is less chance of making mistakes if there is less chance of making mistakes there is less chance of making any kind of failures or surprise failures kind of thing. so what we do in condition monitoring what parameters we do uh, do we monitor and analyze that parameters must be quantifiable in terms of some values or qualitative reference there must be some kind of quality reference qualitative reference say for if the color of this oil changes from this color to this color so you must have a qualitative reference this is the color of good oil and with respect to this what is the color of this oil and then you must be in a position to tell that yes you must be in a position to tell that if this degradation level is this this means this if the degradation it looks like this this means this so there should be some qualitative reference or quantifiable in terms of there should be some values well, uh, uh, somebody told that the temperature of the motor is high how how much here the, the temperature can be uh, you can feel 45 degrees celsius may be high for you and maybe 60 degrees celsius is not high for someone it may differ from person to person it may be different from person to person so what what needs to be done then we'll find that there should be a quantitative values today what is the uh, value today 45 degrees celsius by parameter next day 46 degrees celsius. next day 45 degrees celsius. next day 46 degrees celsius. next day 47 degrees celsius. then this way this way this way you are going someday you detect some 51 degrees celsius we will keep on tracking that it has been running in the range of 45 46 47 for last two three months but today suddenly it has raised to a level of four degrees celsius though the permissible length is 65 degrees celsius then also you get related because it has increased to 4 degrees Celsius more. From 47 degrees Celsius, it has uh, got increased to 51 degrees Celsius. So there is a rise of 4 degrees Celsius, though the acceptable limit is 65 degrees Celsius. So what need to be done? Is this a deviation kind of thing? That we must understand. So if the things are quantifiable in terms of some values or some qualitative reference, we can make some kind of comparison. We can make some kind of relative analysis okay and if that can be done 
then we'll have to move ahead or these parameters must have some predefined values say for uh, vibration analysis when we talk about when we consider about the iso charge 10816 there have many charts that uh, that that are uh, that can be seen on the google site as well when we find that we find that the, the it has divided the plan machinery in three categories rather four categories but then we will not talk about the fourth category only three categories where it has categorically told that up to 15 kilowatt motor all the system that are being run by motors up to 15 kilowatt that will be class one from 15 kilowatt to 75 kilowatt that will be class two and from above 75 kilowatt it will be class three now they have given the values what is the excellent zone of the vibration readings rms or peak what is the good level of that bearings what is the tolerable limit and what is the critical limit, severe limit, high severe limit. so by thumb rule i'm telling they'll go and check it out also for class one they have the maximum tolerable level they have kept it as 4.5 something like 4.5 or 4.8 to be the on the safer side or, or to be on the you know for the just purpose of remembering it we have take a, just assign the values as 5 7 and 11 5 for class 1 7 for class 2 and 11 plus class 3 means motors up to 15 kilowatt may vibrate up to 5 millimeter per second rms motors up to 75 kilowatt may vibrate up to 7 millimeter per second rms and above 75 kilowatt may vibrate up to 11 millimeter per second but today's industry has changed it was maybe this thing was made much earlier where 75 kilowatt motor was a big issue big uh, uh, term, uh, big machine for people to consider 75 kilowatt 75 kilowatt today I, at this point of time where i will be working we have motors up to 26 megawatt motors of 26 megawatt we have three motors of 26 megawatt we have two motors of 17 18 megawatt we have probably four motors of 10 megawatts we have uh, you know three to three to three to five megawatt system more than 15 or 20 kind of things so they are we are talking in megawatts it is and it is given out to kilowatt only so when we were comparing the readings, we could find that class one was five, class two was seven, and class three was 11. All the beginners have a tendency, or the maintenance people have a tendency that these things are linearly, you know, associated. Higher the capacity of motor, rating of motor, higher will be the permissible vibration level of acceptance of vibration. This is an analogy associated with the system. It is not so. It is not so. It is not so. Please take it as point. The larger the machines with weight ratio, high weight ratio, have good damping ratio also. Has good damping ratio. Okay. I've done a larger machines with good damping will vibrate much, much less. Much, much less. Okay. Here we are running the you know, ID fans run by on three megawatt motors whose vibration is not made to exceed three millimeter per second RMS. Three millimeter per second RMS. So it is a tricky question as to what should be the guiding factor of acceptance to vibration level. Then I'll say, try to understand the behavior of that machine. Try to do reference analysis and relative analysis both. If if same machine is having there has two bearings fan is having for two bearings if there are four bearings and all the four bearings when compared are having some vibration level say four five four five four five four five, four, five and one is having 10 11 then it is a concern then it is a concern one is having 1.2 1.3 1.5 then suddenly you have a three vibration level at some point of time then it is a point of concern because all the time you are not going to do some kind of reference analysis you have to do relative analysis associated with it 
why it is that all the bearings are running at 1.2 millimeter per second rms and why is that this particular bearing is running 3.1 3.2 or 3.5 millimeter per second why it is double that vibration level when you put this question in your mind then you'll come to know that certain factors had made this rise increase in this vibration level and what was that factor our aim is to do relative analysis and approach for the minimum value recorded on any of the bearing on that machine that should be our reference that should be our reference that should be our reference so people have many you know certification courses going by various institutes various people immersion is also giving movies institute also gives and many more organizations that uh, are giving on this certification course basically people should must go for certification courses kind of thing vibration analysis because they have practical experience they have vast, vast experience and uh, to explore your mind to open your mind in that area people have so many experiences in that field that uh, they, just by sharing those field experiences as well you will be benefited out of it so the, the, you sh uh, as a beginner or a being in the conditional monitoring uh, uh, we should not limit ourselves to the, just the guiding principle as it since this is the as per iso chart this would be the acceptable vibration level no no you must try to understand the behavior before pronouncing the word okay because a conditional monitoring words of okay gives a loss of confidence to the operation and maintenance team that yes the machine is normal we can run it so you are okay and not okay has a very wider impact on the on the performance of machines on the you know business um, fulfillment the objectives and it is to say this the, the the all the maintenance activity that is being taken by the input of this condition monitoring information reports and all these things comes under the condition based maintenance kind of thing that is a kind of predictive maintenance predictive maintenance now some of the basic steps that they involved you know in machinery condition monitoring all are doing all people are doing all there are eminent people in this group as well and uh, much experience with uh, great scholar the thing people from iits and everything the, the great um, respected professors from various uh, great institutes are there in this uh, oh, um, this event and uh, this 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 uh, we have learned from them only because this is their uh, hard work and uh, their um, uh, experimentation that put these things into you know a uh, basic modeling of these things we are just experimenting on those things and trying to gain out of this these are some of the basic steps. this is not confined to that these are the only steps this this is just an experience it may change from people to people from industry to industry and from concept to concept the basic idea is how far you are able or successful to save the failures in your plant in your industry if you are able to save failures then you are doing good simply good no wrong or right you know method of adopting your condition monitoring if you are able to raise alarms before any kind of failures then definitely you are doing good definitely you are doing good so these are some of the steps that we have been employing here i just want to share it because because who do you do the the condition monitoring you must have a system identified who do you do the condition monitoring that needs to be clear kiska karna hai mein that that needs to be done that should be what needs to be done well so identification of a critical machine or system is important now this how this critical machine or system is how do we define criticality so there are only three aspects one is environment focus environment if it is capable of polluting environment or degrading environment that should be your first priority because it is everybody's responsibilities as the citizen of this country and as a as a, a, a you know a habitant of this planet we must take care that there should not be pollution of any kind so if there is environment environment degradation there is risk to environment 
that system should become our first priority that it should not fail it should not fail second priority comes the safety of man man safety of man machine then comes machine but safety of man comes second second is a second priority third comes the priority associated with the production there should not be any production losses there should not be any production losses so first is environment is a risk to environment second is risk to safety human safety third is risk to production so if these parameters see these three based on these three parameters we have to identify the critical assets machine or system whose condition monitoring needs to be done we cannot do the condition monitoring you know for the system that is being used to cut the grasses in our lawn that is the wastage of energy and resource and money also we must be choosy in implementing the concept of condition monitoring the equipment must be added but this is the first step on what we have to do the condition monitoring where which you are the equipment that criticality needs to be added. so first step is identify identification of criticality now you must understand what parameters will reflect that this bearing is in okay condition this equipment is in okay condition some factors the parameters must be there what parameters ensures that the this machine is in good running condition in good health maybe it's temperature if its temperature is normal maybe okay if its vibration is normal okay if its flow and process uh, flow and pressures are normal okay if it is drawing current within permissible limits and balance current it's okay okay if it is making a permissible sound sound level creating a particular sound it's okay okay if it is creating a particular you know radiation it's okay okay so we must be in a position to identify to what parameters are indicative regarding the health of that machine or other words what factors will affect its service life what factors will affect its service life if we know that factors maybe we will try to track the the the, the values of those factors or the, the the influence of those factor on that machine so measurement of parameters which affect the service life of that machines need to be identified and measured it's called measure kind line then we have start measuring to that system and when we start measuring i have already told that parameters must be quantifiable which can be converted into some values or some qualitative reference so if we are measuring these parameters this this they have some values kind of thing some reference you know reference values or some reference qualitative reference color code something like that those things needs to be trended over a period of time last month data one month data one week data or uh, the hourly data anything trend that data and see some kind of deviation exist or not if there is a kind some kind of deviations definitely by trending those data we will be in a position to detect the abnormality or deviation so when the detection is there now we have detected the abnormality next step is analyze it analyze the abnormality what factors would have caused the system to come at come to this stage what factors what factors would have caused the system to come to this stage we must analyze in that manner and we must come to the picture that what are the root causes associated with this i told you there are three things either it will be internal like food poisoning external means moisture attack or some mosquito attack or some uh, dust attack kind of thing or some heat radiation kind of thing third interactive the rubbing part the interacting part that's it so we have to analyze the problems now once we analyze the problem if we know this is that there are the root causes then we have to go just follow the counter measures associated with it. counter measures associated with it. these counter measures becomes the corrective corrective actions corrective action the counter measures become the corrective actions so when corrective actions are taken again then we have to verify whether these corrective actions that has been taken 
was effective in giving some kind of result that needs to be verified and if it is verified that yes the corrective actions were taken were in the right directions then we have to review our preventive maintenance sheet or inspection monitoring sheet whether these steps checkpoints exist in this preventive maintenance or not if they do not exist then we'll add those points into the preventive measures or the inspection sheets and then try to follow the free and do the pdm cycle if the point number eight step that is following the preventive measures if this becomes robust in the long run then all these things will be just a you know kind of you know abstract noun for us this if this becomes strong because if the failure uh, preventive measures becomes strong for identifying various reasons and all these things if it is reviewed updated reviewed updated review updated to the extent that there are no more deviations associated with it. there are deviations not to not to the level that uh, earlier it was coming you know eight failures per year now it is coming hardly one failure per year that needs to be again given a wider time frame to what to say that if one failure one month uh, one year means 10 failures 10 years so again with our time period will increase to 10 years so from 10 failures to 10 in 10 years we'll try to reduce to one failure in 10 years this is how the you know the whole process of you know um redefining redefining and enrichment redefining and enrichment takes place so this the predictive maintenance cycle is not a one step approach it has to continue continuous continuous it is not that once we have reviewed the preventive maintenance associated with some kind of abnormality associated with the system and we have been able to save the failure our job is over continuous condition monitoring is a continuous process condition monitoring is a continuous process we must understand we must understand when the time we will break our current monitoring uh, sequences and uh, thinking that the things are running well do this and that we should know why we should continue to do it no take some logical steps you have been doing monitoring per, per day in, uh, decrease the frequency to weekly then decrease to frequency to fortnightly just to see whether the now the the tendency of uh, abnormality detection is increasing or decreasing that has to be taken into account so this is just a simple method of productive maintenance cycle that we are trying to follow now, what are those parameters associated with these things? Whether it is related to excessive vibration, shaking, jar, spikes, movement, eh? whether you are de these things are desirable in the machines or not, we have to understand. A vibrating screen will always shake and will show the vibrations, jerks, and all these things. But a uh, uh, <laughs> large machine, which is not of the vibrating nature, will have to show, uh, you know. And uh, will not have to jerk or shake in that in that manner, just as the vibrating screens are doing. So we must understand what are the best behavior associated with that system. Whether this lubrication, contamination, degradation needs to be monitored, and whether the the performance of that machines that we must understand. Whether these are critical parameters associated with this, whether high or low temperature is critical to that machine. If it is critical to that machine, that will affect the performance of that machine. That becomes our one of our parameters. If poor my skill manship, workmanship, then bearing misalignment, soft fitting, improper fitting, and kind of, if that is the case, and is very important, then we'll have to look, look at the methods as to detect how the, could be there could be misalignment. We have to follow vibration analysis because misalignment, soft fitting, improper fitting, all this can be detected through this, this vibration analysis. The spectrum analysis associated with this. We have to look with this whether the weak structure or foundation base could be the param become the parameter, or flow of structure in the system could become the parameter, or loading conditions, dimensional changes, tensioning force, all kind of you know current related issues, voltage related resistance, flux density, eddy current, insulation, capacity and continuity becomes can be the parameters of the or change in some kind of chemistry, say oil tan value, total acid number, our base uh, base degradation of oil, or what should be the displacement velocity or acceleration, what will better give the characteristics of that machine, 
or some kind of division process parameter. Flow has decreased, flow has increased, velocity has increased, plus has decreased, volume has increased, decreased, pressure has increased, pressure has no, there is no pressure, temperature has increased. So these are what I am just giving some parameters which are which can be visible, which can be latent as well. But we have to choose some of the parameters which needs to be monitored and trended over a period of time. And its data, the data so generated must be analyzed with respect to reference analysis, with reference to some, you know, uh, acceptance values or with respect to relative analysis. If there are three transformers, why is that two transformers have the temperature of at the collectors only 40 degrees Celsius? Why the third is having only 55 or is having 55 degrees Celsius, though permissible level is 70 degrees Celsius. Even though two are running at 40 degrees Celsius and third transformer is running 70 degrees Celsius, it becomes a point of concern, a point of analysis. Okay, so that needs to be done. That needs to be thought of. So, what parameters need to be taken entirely depends upon the condition monitoring team, uh, which better understand the behavior of that machines with uh, those parameters. Now, this one I have taken from Google. Okay. Just to give an idea, just to give an idea, the, the life of, you know, the uh, useful service life of this machine starts with, with high expectations that, yes, this machine is going to give a high availability. Yes, it is running, it is new, so it will perform. So we have some kind of expectations from this ground to this ground, and it also it may also run to a better level. But at one point of time, the effectiveness starts in that machine. Now, the 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 you know wear and tear and all these things starts to creep into start to creep creep into so there will be a slight degradation start will take place okay slight degradation will take place but it, it will may produce some kind of ultrasonic sound so here we have to adopt the ultrasonic specific if we have some instrument where when we can you know capture the sound level then if it can be corrected at this point of time, maybe this gra this line may extend to this level. Then again, tries to fall from this. And this way, it will increase on. So it is a, a journey of how the condition monitoring activities can be adopted at what stage and where it can be more effective in giving results. Okay. Now, here it have taken laser and thermal production and pipe strength. All considerations have been taken at this place in terms of precision maintenance with the feel that yes, the machine will be now okay, there will be no issue. But over a period of time, it has a tendency because it is a thing that that is that the machines are you know made up of only parts only. Parts only, and the 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 some of the parts may be you know uh, getting uh, uh, <laughs> influenced through uh, through some kind of contact that is interactive deterioration might have taken place with the moving the uh, others uh, coming contact with the other moving parts so interactive is there whether the moisture moisture is there or uh, some environment kind of uh, atmosphere is there okay so what i want to say is that the design assures that good design ensures that your system is going to perform and our precision installation methods, the, the proactive methods in terms of, you know, installing those system help us to, you know, ensure that, yes, the, the, they, they can be detected and corrected eh, in its budding stage. If that happens, this graph will may be will follow the same characteristic. Characteristic in the sense it will be going to straight falling slowly, 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 and with time it will fail somewhere. But with this precision installation and timely detection and correction, this graph may go up to this, 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 and then again go outside and this periphery and then fall. Then fall. So at each point of time, detection and corrective actions will give you the results that are, you know, uh, that will increase the, you know, service life of that systems. What I, what I wanted to tell you is that the precision maintenance plays important. 
after that with cbm the predictive maintenance phase run when the problems are detected some corrective measures need to be taken that the role of preventive maintenance corrective maintenance will all become come into picture come, come into picture so what i want to say is the condition monitoring has high potential of changing the you know you know falling 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 uh, uh, curvature curve of this whole characteristics whole characteristics it can be extended if it can be extended it means we are increasing the life of the system increasing the low life of the system and this is where condition monitoring can help now what are the emerging trends emerging trends in condition monitoring activities machine conduction now emerging trends are kind of people are talking about industrial internet of things um, industry 4.0 solutions kind of thing they are talking about artificial intelligence type of thing they are talking about you know machine learning they are talking about robotics big data analytics and python and data science everything this is that just by adopting those things we are going to follow we are going to get the results that we are you know just emphasizing we are just emphasizing it is going to happen it is going to it is of very yes it is of great advantage well sir but there should be a proof of concept applicable to your machines today industries are focusing two things only one is no breakdown between two plant shutdowns there should not be any breakdown there should not be any failures between two plant shutdowns means industry is having a plant shutdown say for after running for 6 months they will stop the plant for 10 days and within 10 10 days they will take or corrective actions uh, so that they will be ready to run the machines for another 6 months without any stoppage and they are focusing on this in today's industry is focusing on this they are also of the opinion that there should not be any failure you have to take all actions that prevent failures so repair before failure has become the concept repair before failure has become the concept with the with the idea that there should not be any risk to environment there should not be any risk to safety there should not be any risk to production what are the challenges at the moment no breakdown between two plant shutdown and there should be repair before failures so today's industries are focusing on this today's focusing on with their demand the condition monitoring trends have check check in you know i have entirely different direction what needs to be done what needs to be done so that there is no breakdown between two plant shutdowns and we we are in a position to repair before failure that the the budding problems does not cascades into a large problem giving a high defect and failure total cost to company should not embarrass the company it should not uh, you know impact the environment it should not impact the human safety it should not impact the safety they, they have a very stringent demand at the moment the industry is having a very stringent demand and what machinery condition monitoring can do it has a very larger role to play now with such pressure people have many industries have started to adopt you know real time condition monitoring they are of the view of that everything should be real on my mobile on my tab and there should be alarm systems there should be people who can act upon it uh, they are prepared, really doing some kind of innovations how better we can improve upon our sensors how better we can improve upon the you know logistic logistic part the analytical part they are working on it uh, r and d institutions are working day and night operation maintenance teams are focusing that no, we want online sensors install at every point of time at every position of the machines so that we need we must be getting the information and at any time so what these all people are trying to they are trying to just gather the information just try to gather the information just imagine somebody is having a cancer if you come to know what you can do you are not a doctor just knowing cannot help you out there should be prompt corrective action as well so information will yield result information will be useful only when 
it is acted upon. Information will be just information if it is just for the sake of passing the knowledge. No use. There is oil leakage from gearbox. Nobody is going to arrest it. So what will happen? What is the use of those knowledge? I am putting a camera just to detect whether there is leakage or not. And sitting over here, looking at my central uh, dashboard. Yeah, there is oil leakage from that gearbox. Okay, okay, okay. There is oil leakage from that gearbox. I am not taking any actions. I am not taking any actions. So, useless. Useless. Detection followed by prompt corrective actions will be triggered. Detection followed by will be directed. The only going blindly following industry 4.0 solutions, adopting most of the sensors, smart sensors, this and this is not going to help. We must be in a position to, you know, act how better we can act upon the detected abnormality. We have to look at this model. And the success of condition monitoring will depend on how prompt you have been in taking corrective actions. How prompt you have been in, you know, um, taking the opportunities of doing maintenance activities. The opportunity maintenance is important because when you have information that, yes, that oil is leaking from that gearbox and you want to arrest it, but then you cannot arrest it because it is running. Eh? So you are just topping it up, topping it up, topping it up along the oil leakage, but you have, you know that you need a machine stoppage of one hour. Uh, someday due to certain reason or the other, that machine is stopped. There is no production in the line. You have the opportunity of taking maintenance. Have the opportunity of and that is the beauty of information that you have. You must be, we must be making our backlog registers. So that those backlog registers must have defect backlog registers must be, you know, um, uh, getting reflected, displayed any in any, any point of time as to what are the problems, all problems that we needs to be attended to, and what should be the required resources associated, and what should be the you know, uh, time required to attend this job. That should be clear at that point of time. So, if these two things are clear, these two things are clear, then then we have the opportunity. I was going through the systems as the what has changed in condition monitoring? I was Googling. Then I came with a very good uh, point of time where uh, people, uh, uh, there is a book called Asset Condition Monitoring Management by Jack Nicholas Jr. It has outlet for condition monitoring. Maybe it was uh, written in, I think, at uh, 2010 year about, I think. That's why, or in the in the 2000s, it is decade, decade some 10 to 12 years back. It, it has rightly pointed out. In 1980s, we were, you know, we were focusing on the portable data collection, collector devices. Then, when 90s laptops, we tried to work on the laptops. Laptops was the fantasy of that time. In 2000, wireless data communication became more. Various kind of softwares emerged out of where you can do some kind of analytics. Today, we are fighting on internet, industrial internet of things artificial intelligence, machine learning, and all those things. This is a good part. Someday, these are going to be utilized like, uh, you know, uh, the the first, uh, uh, just as, you know, uh, that will become very common in the industry. This is just a starting. This is just, we must take, you know, um, judgmental decisions in this. Judgmental in the sense that we must compare our cost-benefit ratios. Why I am telling, uh, repeating this thing because the organization culture to assimilate this technology is also very important. Suppose you employ a smart sensor on some gearbox, which is capable of taking vibration, three directions, and temperature of the air pressure. You just employ that sensor, and somebody comes and it makes mockery out of it. It just plucks it out or takes it away. Or it uh, there is dust all all this falling on this nobody taking care of what's the use of those things what's the use of those things somebody is playing with the cell centers not taking the importance of that sensors some kind of maturity is to be there if it is telling some temperature is high gearbox let it be it should run it should not. temperature is allowable level up to 85 degrees Celsius it is showing only 65 degrees Celsius it is still allowable let it run later but 
person, the people, the team is not focusing on the yesterday's data, the day before yesterday's data. That yesterday's data was 55 degrees Celsius. Today it is 55 degrees Celsius. Something has changed. And that something needs to be analyzed. Something needs to be analyzed. So major challenges, what I feel is the, at this point of time, is the high initial cost towards civil instruments and stock. This is the first most, most challenge in the machinery condition monitoring. All people talk about machinery condition monitoring. There are very small, big, medium, large, and all these things. But when it comes to you know, the initial cost, then uh, people take a back seat. Say, for example, a ferrography and wear debris analysis, which is the primary tool for, you know, hydraulics and lubricating oils, primary tool for hydraulics and lubricating oils. They, people, when they go for uh, pur purchasing, buying of this ferrography and WD, it costs around 80 lakhs rupees. People just put, uh, yes, we'll think over it, we'll think over it, and that takes a back seat. It's not like that. It's not like that. When we start a hospital, a must-be specialty hospital with various diagnostic techniques, it must have tools and instruments and gadgets, all these things for your x-rays, for your blood testing, for your um, uh, other things, ultrasonics, all kinds of things. It must have done. These are not uh, the cheap instruments. They are costly. So when you intend to put a hospital, multi hospital in, in your area, or you want to set up a condition monitoring cell in your organization, you must be in a position to invest initially because over a period of time, the ROI on these investments is much, much less because I have been working over here. I could say that I am saving more than 100 crores of rupees with an investment of just one crore rupees. So things are like that. Things are like that. If you, you save a failure of 26 megawatt motor, one failure is going to save you because that the cost of that motor is itself is 25 crores, 30 crores. If you save one, you know, hot hot, hot water uh, carriers, one hot metal carrier, if you save one saving, so those instruments, uh, those equipment, hot metal carrier has a cost of 28 crores. If you say one failure associated with that, we are going to save two, three crores to that system. This is a big achievement. This is a big achievement. So it has a high potential of, you know, the cost benefit ratio, you know, people look at the initial cost. People look at the initial cost, but then they must look at the, the long, long benefit part. Short term benefits are not going to help this out. Long term, people have the habit of just employ some external agency, you can do some analysis for one week, two weeks, and it will give result. No, this is not always desirable. Condition monitoring is a continuous approach where the condition monitoring engineers need to track. So, high initial cost towards CP instrument and staffing is the major challenge that we are facing in industries. In industries, if they adopt it at the lower level of the industries, I think the, 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 it has a very bright future in coming. And it, of course, has given a very bright future in many industries because those industries which have implemented conditional monitoring, they have a different work culture, they have a different rate of failures, they have a different rate of success in their business also. Other challenges are that we start very high. Yes, we'll start with the conditional monitoring cell, we'll do this, we'll that, that, we'll that, do this, but then we don't have that, you know, maturity level of, you know, executing those activities. It is like that. Go and check, it will give some result. This is the problem, this is the problem. It's not like that. It's not like that. We have to be very patient in this approach. We must be track our progress also. So starting very high will not always give a very you know, we want to invest this, this, then we'll do condition monitoring. No, I told you now. LLF checklist is the first step towards condition. Start with that. 
then take one meter vibration meter, then check for vibration meter, then these, these, these. So this, 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 this will be increasing. So this, this, this will be increasing. We started our condition of mountain product, I think, with just an investment, I think, um, only well, 10 lakhs rupees. To, today, we have an asset of 5 crores rupees in the conditional mounting systems, with conditional mounting system. But over these five years, we have saved more than 500 crores rupees, which is more beneficial. 500 crores rupees or 5 crores rupees. That needs to be taken call. So, it's not that we always start very high. People have the habit of starting very high. These are the all challenges. This becomes under the challenge because no other industry wants to spend more. I told you the high initial cost is the major factor. So we must take in slow, slow steps in this direction. We must be aware of our resources and skills. If you are unaware of our resources and skills in the market, in the system, there is no, there is no issue, no use. Organization culture is another important thing. Team capability is another important thing. So what I want to say is the initial cost, skills and staffing are the real challenges that is being done. Organization culture can change over a period of time by adoption of conditional monitoring activities, but it will take time. But it will take time. But we have to be patient as conditional monitoring engineers to make it more effective. Now, what will make you fail? What will you make? What will make you fail? There are some errors associated with human beings as well. We have tried to list out this uh, uh, common human errors. Even if there are conditional monitoring activities, but if there is lack of communication, if there is lack of teamwork, if there are not norms, there is no norms. Okay, if there is pressure of doing all these things, we'll do this, do that. You have to do this, do that. If there is some kind of pressure, if there is some kind of complacency, there is lack of knowledge or awareness, where there is lack of resources, distractions, and all these fatigue and stress, all these, these 12 human errors may impact your condition monitoring efforts. Because they are all, you know, accelerators, enablers of failures associated with machines. They all lead to failure to machines. If there are failure to machines, equipment reliability is poor. If equipment reliability is poor, then condition monitoring, whatsoever you are doing in condition monitoring has no value. So I was talking about how to create SOPs and SMPs for mistake profit. So we must create SOPs and SMPs based on the condition monitoring results for, okay. So based on the condition monitoring effect, so that there should not be errors. There should not be uh, errors. Now, a machine, what I said to you, machine fails because their functional parts fail. Their functional parts fail. A cycle has a functional part, its wheel is a functional part. Its chain is a functional part. Hey, if it fails, will not cycle, uh, ride on the cycle. But if the handle, gloves, uh, the grips fail, even though you can ride it, no issue. So, for a failure of a machine, its functional parts fail, must fail. Then only it is called a functional failure. It's not reliable. Results are, and generally a machine parts fails with falling or uh, any of these following six reasons. One is natural deterioration. Second is force deterioration. Force deterioration means we know the system is degrading and we are allowing it to degrade because of some compulsion. Because of some compulsion. Then it is force deterioration. And it is not controllable. Because you want to control it, but you are not allowed to do control it. That is a force compulsion and you are allowing the system to fail. That is the force deterioration. This is not control. Natural deterioration can be controlled to some extent. By following precision alignment, proactive measures, we can control this to some extent, but not. Shortcomings in plant maintenance, task list frequencies. There is there is problem with the, if there is, if I told you, we, we should focus, review our maintenance activities, preventive maintenance activities. Okay, so if there is any lacuna existing it, we must add those points, make, review it, update it, and if doing so, this is controllable. If you are putting extra, extra points, extra, extra activities that are related to for failures, and we can prevent failures, then, then we are, what we are doing, redefining our preventive maintenance. So PM sheets are, PM activities are controllable. 
design weakness is not in our control we cannot control it operational malfunction can be controllable through sops sps lack of skill knowledge and supervision this can be again controlled by proper training so proactive maintenance strategies focus on the controllable part not on the non controllable part here when i tell you the equipment reliability or asset reliability is a function of is a, many activities in series so here we can say for for machine to perform there are six more steps trailing behind for is asset received whether this machine has been as per the received as per the design you order some fan and you received a pump is it okay no it is not as per the purchase order that we intend to so that is the first failure if it has come and it is as per po no issue then if we are handling that fan motor or pump eh, and in during handling it is damaged well it will going to perform no again if it is damaged in during storage if you are finding problem if it gets deteriorated or it has exceeded its shelf life then that component becomes you know an um, of non use so reliability will not be there if we are not having following installation procedures if we are not using in right application then again it is a failure if operation people are not uh, following the standard operating procedures they they are uh, tending the machines to trip fail multiple times then they they we cannot help on the reliability part sixth part come the maintenance strategies if you do not have the preventive maintenance inspection sheets in place nothing could be done nothing could be done so our role will come at this point of time maintenance strategies where we are doing condition monitoring activities and asking them to to do these the condition based maintenance at this point of time so we are doing at the, we are at the sixth level and before that there are five levels so and they are they have a high impact on my performance of the machines equipment reliability so equipment reliability is, is a multiplying factor of r1 r2 r3 r4 r5 r6 all these points if any of these six points fails then my reliability becomes zero zero see it becomes zero so if i do all the activities here and fail on these then my whole effort of five these activities will become zero see it is the costliest of here the lastest the last lastest or the neutral the last step that where we are able to detect the problem then it becomes very costly either if uh, and here also we are getting zero whether we are not following any of the norm then also getting zero or we are missing on any one of the we four points we are getting zero so we have to do all the six do all or do not do all or do not this should be the mantra this part i'll i'll uh, leave it okay uh okay so what i want to say is going back the 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 steps in the equipment reliability part there are many steps that has to be followed it is not only the condition monitoring people that is that they are solely responsible for the reliability they are in the detection part the five steps and the six steps total six steps what are the anomalies associated what are the problems associated with any of the things will get highlighted when we do the condition monitoring activities so here the, the data analytics plays a important role today's uh, in the present scenario we are trying to do digitalization of condition monitoring activities so that data can be better better managed and decision could be data driven Okay, so in data analytics and condition monitoring, what we are focusing at the moment is we should be looking at the right sample data, and the data display must have some kind of logics for quick understanding, and data analysis must be done with some reference and relative analysis, and all these things data analytics part, you know, has a financial model. It must have a financial. It has a financial impact. and it must satisfy our financial model of accepting this technology see for example this is the 
general drive arrangement of a crane. What we have found that there are so many bearings associated with it. We have this motor one, two, three, four. So there are eight bearings associated with this motor. Gearbox one, gearbox two. There are 12 bearings associated with this. So eight and 12, 20. And we have two bearings here. So I'd love to learn gear. And these both both uh, drives are in synchronous mode. They are synchronized to run uh, to drive a chrome for lifting and hoisting and lifting the material and for you know handling uh, with the cranes. So these idler pinions are the the you know weakest link in the whole arrangement. So what we have been doing, we are just monitoring this point. Because if there will be any problem associated with any of this problem, the bearing or any of these bearings on this side or drive on the, it will have a, you know, difference in RPM speed. A difference in RPM will create a jerk kind of thing on this idler pinion unit. So if there is a jerk, there is some kind of problem associated. So we have installed a, you know, online sensor on this. And we just track the performance of this. If these two are okay, all remaining are okay. So what we have done, the cost of the sensor is very high. We also understand. But instead of, uh, you know, placing 26 sensors, we have placed only two sensors. So the cost of 26 sensor has reduced to cost of two sensors. So this is how we have to, you know, justify the you know, cost involved and the better result we can get of the the adopting the new technologies associated with it. Here also, we want to see that this is the, the very same thing, I'd like to where we have placed the sensors. Say for here, when, when you say that the, the how to represent the data, this is the representation of data for all these things, motor scoop and all in a linear motor scoop, gearbox input, gearbox output, gearbox. this is all arranged in this line. Now, Horizontal readings in one uh, row, vertical in this, axle in this. This clear gains only positions are horizontally, it is weak. It is getting uh, vibration is high at some point of this. So clear indication that the base is not proper, it is not sitting properly. So we, this, when it was, uh, you know, inspected, it was found that the washer has changed its orientation and the bolts are because of over tightening due to clita forming, which has got bent. So it has it was got, it got corrected. Again, you can see only the horizontal readings on this position is clear indication of base strengthening. After base strengthening, it got reduced to this level. Here, it the whole area has been divided into you now seven zones, each side seven zones, or other, and this this uh, the temperatures gradients have been you know trended over a period of time. It clearly says where the temperature is high, it which zone, and how what is the current status as of now, clearly. So it is a display of data, how you better you display just by looking at it, the analysis becomes very easy. So we must present our data in that manner only. So yeah, you do visual analytics so that yes, it is a problem. Take the photo in such a manner that just, just, just superimposing, you can say, you just send these images, you did not have to write anything. You did not have to write anything. They say before and after all these things you, you can give, okay. So this is how the things are. Today's IoT based uh, cloud uh, computing kind of things, every year sensors and gadgets are coming. Only thing is that please do the cost benefit analysis and the, the, the kind of benefit you can, whether we are in a position to adopt the technology at this platform or whether we some need some kind of awareness and training on this. But definitely these sensors and these technology is going to revolutionize our condition monitoring activities. Better sooner we adopt it, sooner we will be in, in a beneficial phase of life. So this adoption of this new technology will help us large coverage. It will be, it will be, uh, coverage equipment is safety risk zone also. So real time monitoring can be done, failure prevention can be easily done and maintenance cost reductions can be done. But the challenges still hold good there. Challenges are over waiting here. Technology cost and limitation with respect to decision support system is very high. We are not in a position to find suitable sensors because uh, it, uh, today also the size of sensors is very large. Okay, this those sizes has to be reduced so that we can place it at the smallest area available on the machines. 
IT infrastructure, IT infrastructure is another issue because we cannot go on the rental cost and all these things. People find it very difficult in interacting with the monitoring terms when it has many, you know, directions of following because government and uh, private sectors, they have different way of working all these things. So people won't be uh, comfortable with this. People need a uh, independent IT structure, infrastructure for these uh, gadgets because people who are using must be the owner of that system. There should not be interference from the external agencies as well. And this is the limited applications in some areas and centralized technical team on 24 by 7 basis is required for, uh, you know, uh, getting those data, you know, and in real time analysis of all those things. So this requires an infrastructure, the large infrastructures to, as of now, it will become, uh, you know, uh, talk of the day uh, when, when it, uh, after some time, but then today it is a little bit costly in terms of that and the coverage and the cost. So this is all the limitations that with the technologies that we have been facing at the moment. Here, I wanted to reflect you or make you sail through some of the practical issues in condition monitoring and how better we can do condition monitoring to give the you know profitability to any organization. At us now, one concept is can be added to this that is FME and uh, RPM. That is failure mode effect analysis and risk uh, um, priority number. At point this point of time, I am working on it um, and uh, trying to explore how better we can employ this FME and RPN in equipment and with process and in, in also in planning so that, you know, this is a very good tool. I have, I have done, I think more than uh, 32, 33 FMEs at the moment. And I was uh, thrilled to get the result out of it. It is able to identify the critical spares. It is able to, you know, uh, decide your um, preventive action plans, risk mitigation plans. It is able to, you know, decide your, uh, it can uh, review your preventive maintenance and all the methods uh, with the resource planning part also. So next, uh, wherever I'll get a chance to speak at this such, such kind of forums, I'll pick those FME and RPN calculation kind of thing. And that becomes an integral part to associated with the condition monitoring. This is all I have to share with my, um, with all you, all of you. They are all the senior members over here. I appreciate their um, presence here in this uh, whole uh, session. And uh, I really appreciate and uh, thank uh, Sidra Madam for her efforts, for her team's effort in making this possible in this COVID era also. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you, the audience. Any questions, I will try to have, will be happy to answer all those questions. Thank you, sir. So we are waiting for the questions from the participants. If participants uh, have any questions or query, then he can, they can post in the chat yes. box. So meanwhile, sir, I have one questions. Yes, sir. Okay, sir, I want to know that how we can use a data data analysis and artificial intelligence or machine learning in the equipment condition inspection and monitoring. Very good question, sir. Very good question. I appreciate that you have pointed out. And um, anything you can install sensors on the system. It be real time on the online system, online monitoring system. You can, but then the basic idea is you must put the you know the alarm limits to it. What should be your first alarm level associated with that? What should be your second alarm level, and what should be your trip level? So when you put some kind of alarm levels associated with that, and if it gets triggered, then artificial intelligence come into picture. Artificial intelligence into picture, but. If you want to implement machine learning associated with that, then you, after this trigger of this alarm, the machine itself must trigger some activity actions and so trigger some command as to nullify those alarms. How this is, for example, I say, when we are uh, operating a turbine, say, the temperature of certain, the, the media has increased, oil temperature has increased, say for, and a sorted alarm has generated in the, on the uh, HMI control desk. And um, the alarm has generated, 
it has triggered the alarm is there it has triggered somebody has to acknowledge it or the system have will acknowledge it if human are there to acknowledge it then human are there to take the actions if human are not there to acknowledge it system itself has to acknowledge it then becomes it becomes a artificial intelligence now when the system acknowledges it yes i have i have acknowledged that yes there is alarm situation the temperature has risen what needs to be done so there will be a logic that increase the flow of food a water in heat exchanger so that the cooling will there will be more in the heat exchanger and oil temperature will drop if that happens this machine has learned to operate so that there, there has been a machine learning kind of activity so so one is online real time condition monitoring you are trying to do is uh, by adopting real time sensors or online sensors one is by putting some thresholds or some kind of alarms you are putting into the uh, artificial intelligence kind of thing yes this is low alarm medium alarm or high alarm and then tripping alarms or by triggering some kind of commands to the system to acknowledge those commands uh, sorry alarms and then taking corrective actions in uh, through system itself that comes your machine learning process so this is a kind of in a kind of intellectual intel in a intellectual kind of uh, creating a, a intellectual brain in the machine itself it is a kind of robotic action so when we talk about the industrial internet of thing and artificial and the machine learning it's a combination of whole things where you have a detection problem detection somebody triggers it artificial intelligence and somebody takes the corrective actions out of the command then it becomes a machine learning kind of thing this is how the system work and that requires you know a, a ample you know a cost associated with it so at present people are not using it when we are operating turbines of larger that turbines people are not using it at the moment maybe time will come then we, when it become cheaper and more handy to use it am i clear dr riyaz yes yes sir thank you sir sir so i think that it will enhance the equipment reliability by the implement of this uh, ai and machine learning right sir right that will be going to be a game changer in the coming days yes so what about the cost uh, whether the implement of this will increase the cost to the large extent or not definitely definitely it is going to increase because because there must some data must exist to be captured now how do you are going to capture those data at what point of time which are the suitable areas of collecting those data that needs to be defined that needs to be studied for okay and how your media is moving in the whole circuit at what point it is liable to get temperature high that needs to be configured so a clear picture needs to be you need to know the anatomy of a human body clearly to do a, a, to be a better surgeon that's that's for sure okay Yes. so ha huh, so if you want to be a better surgeon or a successful surgeon kind of thing you must understand the anatomy of that system anatomy of the where by puncturing what organs you are going to access it and what in the whole system is going to affect the 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 health of that system you must be aware so it is a little bit costly because people are not in the position to identify the position, uh, point where from this data needs to be taken and whether the one sensor you can rely upon that it is giving the accurate data you start doubting it and you try to put one more sensor to that place and then somebody doubts it that this is not the correct place so you put another sensor to the another place so this way just because of doubt you start to create uh, put uh, start putting more and more sensors in the whole process and the cost implications becomes high so people are a little bit you know uh, anxious also and try to adopt the technology also but then at present the cost is very high we have not employed uh, deployed this machine learning at the moment maybe it is uh, implemented in some uh, in all the aviation industry i think but uh, some of the uh, defense mechanism also where safety is of high concern where the cost of you know um, r and d cost is also high so sensors are there there it had might have been implemented but in real life industries where manufacturing and all this thing people are not at the moment uh, employing that <laughs> maybe they will be employed in coming future okay thank you sir so thank you. if any any participant has any question or queries then they can post in the chat box till now i cannot see any questions okay okay so there is no more questions thank you so thank now, you dr riyaz yes yes sir thank you 
so now i would like to thank engineer shivnath ram sir for gracing the occasion with his presence and enlightening us about the topic which he has given so sir your topic was very much informative and it has increased our knowledge in the machine conditioning monitoring area so that was very much useful and for us so thank you so much sir for taking thank our you. time from your busy schedule and joining us today and inspiring us all so it is very very nice moment for us to hear your talk and we would be more happy when you come to our university physically and then Thanks, we sir. can we can get more knowledge and we can gain more knowledge from and from your experience so thank you sir very much thank you thank you uh, dr riyad and sidra madam thanks for all your uh, uh, efforts ma'am and uh, it uh, it has been really nice interacting with you all ma'am really nice okay thank you sir i would also like to thank all the participants who have attended this session of uh, fdp and i hope that they have benefited from this uh, talk okay so thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you So your voice is not clear, ma'am. Your voice is not clear. No, no voice, no voice. No voice. Your voice is not there, ma'am. Some some issues have issues have taken place. Am I audible? Yes, right now you are audible, ma'am. Yes. yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. For your time and uh, presenting the challenges and future scope for for academy situations, and uh, sure. we yeah, hope to collaborate this with you and have uh, exposed yeah, ourselves. I'll, 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 I'll love to. I love to visit your AMU University, ma'am, because it has been a fancy. university for me once at one point of time i tried to get admission to that university fab <laughs> most welcome sir most welcome yeah sure ma'am sure thank you ma'am thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank okay, you sir dear participants there is a small announcement that uh, your attendance link has been posted in the chat box it will not be shared in the whatsapp group so please fill the attendance right now